part two section one of the freedom of the will by jonathan edwards this librivox recording is in the public domain part two wherein it is considered whether there is or can be any such sort of freedom of will as that wherein armenians place the essence of the liberty of all moral agents and whether any such thing ever was or can be conceived of section one showing the manifest inconsistence of the armenian notion of liberty of will consisting in the will's self-determining power having taken notice of those things which may be necessary to be observed concerning the meaning of the principal terms and phrases made use of in controversies concerning human liberty and particularly observed what liberty is according to the common language and general apprehension of mankind and what it is as understood and maintained by armenians i proceed to consider the armenian notion of the freedom of the will and the supposed necessity of it in order to moral agency or in order to any one's being capable of virtue or vice and properly the subject of command or counsel praise or blame promises or threatenings rewards or punishments or whether that which has been described as the thing meant by liberty in common speech be not sufficient and the only liberty which makes or can make any one a moral agent and so properly the subject of these things in this part i shall consider whether any such thing be possible or conceivable as that freedom of will which armenians insist on and shall inquire whether any such sort of liberty be necessary to moral agency etc in the next part and first of all i shall consider the notion of a self-determining power in the will wherein according to the armenians does most essentially consist the will's freedom and shall particularly inquire whether it be not plainly absurd and a manifest inconsistence to suppose that the will itself determines all the free acts of the will here i shall not insist on the great impropriety of such ways of speaking as the will determining itself because actions are to be ascribed to agents and not properly to the powers of agents which improper way of speaking leads to many mistakes and much confusion as mr locke observes but i shall suppose that the armenians when they speak of the will's determining itself do by the will mean the soul willing i shall take it for granted that when they speak of the will as the determiner they mean the soul in the exercise of a power of willing or acting voluntarily i shall suppose this to be their meaning because nothing else can be meant without the grossest and plainest absurdity in all cases when we speak of the powers or principles of acting or doing such things we mean that the agents which have these powers of acting do them in the exercise of those powers so when we say valor fights courageously we mean the man who is under the influence of valor fights courageously when we say love seeks the object loved we mean the person loving seeks that object when we say the understanding discerns we mean the soul in the exercise of that faculty so when it is said the will decides or determines the meaning must be that the person in the exercise of a power of willing and choosing or the soul acting voluntarily determines therefore if the will determines all its own free acts the soul determines them in the exercise of a power of willing and choosing or which is the same thing it determines them of choice it determines its own acts by choosing its own acts if the will determines the will then choice orders and determines the choice and acts of choice are subject to the decision and follow the conduct of other acts of choice and therefore if the will determines all its own free acts then every free act of choice is determined by a preceding act of choice choosing that act and if that preceding act of the will be also a free act then by these principles in this act too the will is self-determined that is this in like manner 
is an act that the soul voluntarily chooses or which is the same thing it is an act determined still by a preceding act of the will choosing that which brings us directly to a contradiction for it supposes an act of the will preceding the first act in the whole train directing and determining the rest or a free act of the will before the first free act of the will or else we must come at last to an act of the will determining the consequent acts wherein the will is not self-determined and so is not a free act in this notion of freedom but if the first act in the train determining and fixing the rest be not free none of them all can be free as is manifest at first view but shall be demonstrated presently if the will which we find governs the members of the body and determines their motions does also govern itself and determines its own actions it doubtless determines them the same way even by antecedent volitions the will determines which way the hands and feet shall move by an act of choice and there is no other way of the will's determining directing or commanding anything at all whatsoever the will commands it commands by an act of the will and if it has itself under its command and determines itself in its own actions it doubtless does it the same way that it determines other things which are under its command so that if the freedom of the will consists in this that it has itself in its own actions under its command and direction and its own volitions are determined by itself it will follow that every free volition arises from another antecedent volition directing and commanding that and if that directing volition be also free and that also the will is determined that is to say that directing volition is determined by another one before that and so on till we come to the first volition in the whole series and if that first volition be free and the will is itself determined in it then that is determined